YouTuber Who Vanished by Nick Crowley. What's good? How you day going? Morning, evening, night, whenever you're watching this video. I'm not going to do a long intro, not going to talk your ears off here. It's not too often we stop by Nick Crowley channel, but I was like, you know what, today let's go ahead and just shot with dogs, see what the hell going on. And from this description, yo, it sounds creepy as hell. Sound like we're dealing with a young doctor at that. But yo, you want to check out the original video, link will be in the description below, but let's go. Hi, baby. How are you? It's me, Talika, your munchkin. November 6th, 2013, a video is uploaded to an obscure YouTube channel called Sandra 3000 Casey. Its creator, 30 year old Talika Patrick. It's Talika. Its purpose to send a heartfelt message to her lover. I got dressed up for you. And I bought flowers. Look. Flowers. A message that would go unreceived, however, with the only viewership coming from Talika herself. <laughs> November 10th, 2013. Just four days after posting her first heartfelt video, Talika uploads what would become her final video. Um, if you were here, this is what it would be your again dedicating it to her love and again going completely unnoticed yeah, falling man, into the void that is perfect, youtube though, but love. is it like a role play video for someone or is she just role playing i don't know what it would be your again dedicating it to her love and again going completely unnoticed falling into the void that is youtube and settling into the endless depths of the site presumably never to be seen again or at least that's how it should have gone. In reality, these videos would eventually be put on display for the whole world to see, as nearly a month following her very first upload, Talika Patrick would disappear, leaving behind a minute trail of clues, the most prominent of which coming from her previously unknown channel, as it would quickly be discovered that things within these videos were nothing like how they seemed, giving rise to what would quickly become one of the strangest internet mysteries of all time. This just gets stranger and stranger. The very strange new wrinkle in the case of that missing doctor in Michigan, Talika Patrick. Just imagine that you were here with me. I hope it's closure in this damn story, man. Crowley to to check out these great well. deals and to step up your hygiene today. December 5th, 2013. Talika Patrick spends her day at the Borges Medical Center in downtown Kalamazoo, working there as a first year medical resident. The young doctor was described as being incredibly bright by her colleagues, with an extremely promising future ahead. And to those who knew her, she was a fun loving and just overall great person to be around. However, for whatever reason on this particular day, Talika's personality seemed different. Upon her shift coming to an end, Talika would ask a coworker for a ride to the Radisson, a hotel located just a few miles away. Her request seemed strangely frantic, almost pushy, and sensing that something may be wrong, the coworker agreed to take her there, dropping her off at the entrance before driving away. From there, cameras show as Talika attempts to rent a room, only to be turned away as she didn't have enough money or a proper ID, with the young woman having left her wallet back at her job. During this conversation, the employees at the front desk noticed that Talika appeared on edge and slightly incoherent, prompting a receptionist to ask if she was okay. What but Talika the... brushed aside the concern and eventually left the hotel. Outside, Talika entered the hotel's complimentary shuttle, asking the driver to drop her back off at the Borges so she could retrieve her wallet, return, and then pay for her room. But when the driver eventually pulled into the parking lot of the hospital, Talika nervously turned to him and said, I can't go back there with you, before rushing off, ducking her head between parked vehicles as if she was attempting to hide from someone. The driver then watched as she got into her car and pulled off into the night. He would be the last known person to ever speak to her. On the road, Talika began driving frantically at extremely high speeds, weaving in and out of traffic, displaying signs that again, seemed to indicate that she was potentially being followed, and that she was trying to evade someone or something. Her driving became so erratic that a concerned motorist would call the police and report her vehicle. But before the authorities could arrive, Talika's front left tire on her 1997 Lexus would burst, forcing the car off the road before it came to a stop in the dead of the night, stranding her 100 miles away from her home. Talika then grabbed the keys from her ignition, exited the vehicle, and was never seen again. 
Within minutes, police officers would discover her car parked alongside a ditch, and upon searching the vehicle, all they would find were her personal belongings like her wallet, cash, and a cell of phone, course, but no sign of Talitha man. herself. Damn, it's about to be one of those cases, huh, where either the brain trip out or drugs are involved, or they really run it from someone. Huh? Fucking Nick Crowley, always find like these kind of stories. her wallet, cash, and a cell phone, but no sign of Talika herself. Authorities would go on to search the entire area for miles around, including the shores of a nearby lake, but found nothing. And with no Damn, sign of the young Talika. doctor, Talika Patrick was officially declared missing on the 6th of December. Leading up to her disappearance, everyone who came into contact with Talika that night all shared a similar story. Something was clearly off with her. She seemed nervous, even terrified, prompting some to immediately conclude that foul play was involved and that perhaps she had somehow been hunted down. To address this theory, police dogs would be brought in to track her scent trail, which bizarrely led them from her open car door directly to the side of the road before coming to an abrupt stop seemingly insinuating that she someone in had car. picked her up, willingly or unwillingly. Adding to the suspicious nature of her disappearance, the night prior, Talika had called a friend of hers named James Davis, who was living in St. Louis at the time. Oh, yeah, that one more yeah, that car park kind of had me stuck a little bit. Damn, hold up, let me go back. Willingly or unwillingly. Adding to the suspicious nature of her disappearance, the night prior, Talika had called a friend of hers named James Davis, who was living in St. Louis at the time, and explained to him that she believed someone was trying to kill her, and that she needed to get away from Kalamazoo to go visit him, and it's believed that she was driving to St. Louis to meet Davis immediately before she vanished, perhaps confirming that her concerns were in fact warranted. Given the nature of her vanishing, the story of Talika Patrick immediately became a viral news story, with the search effort quickly being launched to determine what had happened to her. But early on, this would yield little to no results, as much like the air on that winter night, her trail grew deathly cold. However, on the internet, a new trail was forming. I love this Shit. The Frustrated internet, by the lack the internet of internet, get the digging, boy, man. But it, but it sucked though because a lot of these ones be sounding good. But like, yeah, at the end, we never fucking know. We never really know what the hell actually happened. Ah. Uh. However, on the internet, a new trail was forming. I love this me. Frustrated by the lack of answers in person, investigators started digging into the online history of Talika Patrick, which led them to their most important discovery yet, her YouTube channel. Going by the name of Sandra 3000 Casey, Talika would publish a series of nine videos within the span of one week in early November 2013, with one of the most infamous being a clip titled My Awesome Day, where she sits in front of her camera and addresses someone she refers to as Baby. Hi, Baby. It's Talika. I am just coming to you to say hi and uh, just to tell you about my day. The video oh, certainly wasn't go. with. Let me see. I think. I am just coming to you to say hi and uh, just to tell you about my day. The video certainly wasn't without its strange moments, as at I, one point. I wouldn't say it's really strange so far, because I told you, I'm someone who watches ASMR mukbangs all that ish a good amount of times it would lead you down the path of watching of bumping into role play videos i don't really watch role play videos i'm not gonna lie to you but i bumped into a couple of them because of asmr that's what i'm thinking this is so far whatever but i don't know though dog. and it was 2013 around that time date naps was kind of like popping crazy so i don't know maybe she was making video for someone she met ah uh, let's just see what we get from here hi and uh just to tell you about my day the video certainly wasn't without its strange moments as at one point she stops and touches her chest before saying baby Ooh, that was kind of i felt that while also going on to randomly burst out into song which seems to last the majority of the video and now i'm home finally Put it up a little bit of 
but it's all right. And these somewhat okay. unusual moments continue from here, as each of our nine uploads follow this same exact format, serving as almost unscripted love letters to this unnamed man. Yeah. In various clips, Talika even alludes to the potential relationship troubles between the two, referencing how she didn't really know what was going on between them. I don't know what's going on, you know, in your life and stuff. You have an idea, but... Know everything. But still adamantly reaffirming the fact that she wants to make things work and that she is still deeply in love. You do your best and I do my best and we give each other a chance. So in love that she even filmed herself cooking extravagant meals made for two, going as far as to set the table for both of them, despite the fact that this Bruh, date was she's young, beautiful, got a head on her shoulder, she cooked. I like her voice. I'm I'm taking these as role playing videos. I don't I can't see her having to go having to I cannot see her having to go this far to impress someone online. I, I don't know, dog. For don't, two, going as far as no to set the table dog. for both of them, despite the fact that this no date wasn't actually present. Here are all my raw materials. I don't even eat chicken. I'm vegetarian. But I want that for you. That's just uh, potatoes so far. If you were here, this is what it would be your plate. Broccoli and tomatoes and peppers and cheese. And within these videos, a few key up. moments make it clear that the two had actually met in person quite recently, as she points to a bouquet of flowers that she states, And here are the flowers from last time insinuating that the two had likely gone on some sort of date within the days prior. Viewing her content as a whole, despite some of the more unusual moments, it's nothing all that jarring, and it really just seems to show a woman who is desperately in love. And whether she was going through some relationship issues or perhaps just in some sort of long distance relationship, it didn't really matter, because these clips were clearly never meant to be seen by anyone but the man they were made for. And at first, investigators likely thought that they would do little in the way of helping to solve this case. However, upon questioning Talika's family and friends about these videos, a glaring red flag began to emerge, and the channel was thrown into a far different light. As according to all those close with her, at the time these videos were released, Talika Patrick should have been single. Patrick's family issued this statement in response to the new video. To our knowledge, Talika was not in a romantic relationship, and it's unclear to whom she is making reference in this video. Not once had Talika, a woman who is said to be quite open and talkative, mentioned to anyone that she was in a relationship. Friends, families, colleagues, and even neighbors never once heard about or saw her with another man. And even digging into her phone records revealed nothing in the form of romantic texts or frequent calls to an unnamed mm. lover. By all accounts, Talika Patrick was undoubtedly a single woman. But if that was the case, then who was she talking to here? But if that was the case, then who was she talking to here? Who were these loving videos for? And if Talika's words were true, referencing previous in-person dates, then how had no one known about this relationship? And most importantly of all, why had she coincidentally gone missing under suspicious circumstances just one month after these strange videos were made? Putting all this into consideration, the suspicious activity on the night of her disappearance, moving as if she was running away, and the videos made for someone who seemingly didn't even exist in her own life, one theory began to emerge, a theory that pointed straight to foul play. Perhaps Talika had gotten involved in some sort of ill-fated secretive relationship, only for things to turn sour, leading to Talika being hunted down and kidnapped, thus explaining why she seemed to be fleeing on the night of her disappearance. With this in mind, investigators began to dig deeper into Talika's online footprint in a desperate search to uncover who this man truly was, believing that he may very well have some involvement in this disappearance, though nothing could have prepared them for the drastic and highly unusual turn that they were about to face. Oh, 
initiated. Tonight, yet another twist in the mystery of the missing Kalamazoo doctor. Target 8 uncovered hundreds of tweets allegedly posted by Talika Patrick in the weeks before she went missing. To those who knew her, Talika was a well put together, extremely intelligent woman who was clearly of sane mind. But the discovery of her Twitter accounts began to paint a slightly different picture. In total, Ooh, investigators so would find five accounts that had all been active at different times throughout 2013, each of them belonging to Talika, and each of them having thousands and thousands of tweets, showcasing incoherent ramblings as if she was posting every single one of her thoughts, oftentimes even having conversations with seemingly no one at all, constantly saying things like, hi my friend, how are you? And, everything okay? Just woke up, sorry. To which no one would be specifically tagged and no one would reply. And the deeper you scroll, the stranger things get. As much like her YouTube channel, she spends most of her time referencing her love interest, stating, Well, I felt you a little bit yesterday. Last night after you messaged, I felt you thinking about me. And, hope you have a wonderful day. Love you. Much like her previous videos, these tweets would fail to gain any semblance of a response, which seemed to push her more and more into madness, creating more accounts and tweeting out even more frequently, typing messages what as if she were expecting someone specific to find her. Should I start another page? Look, look for your friend. Let me know when you find her. Did you find me? I have been messaging you for the past two days from another Twitter account. I thought you'd find it, sigh. And this is just a minuscule glimpse into her posting, as these accounts hold an impossibly vast amount of information with so many unusual moments. But by far the most bizarre detail to come of all these tweets was one name in particular, one of the only specific names mentioned across all of her pages, which she brings up over and over and over again. Marvin Sapp. At Marvin Sapp, good morning. When life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Again. Marvin Sapp, good morning. When life gives you lemons, make lemonade. At Marvin Sapp, good morning. Don't be sad. God never puts more on us than we can bear. All three of these messages were posted within the span of 24 hours, and they were far from the only mentions of the famed Grammy-nominated gospel singer. Sometimes she would make blatant references to him and his music, oftentimes using his lyrics to point to a supposed connection between the two. And though it's hard to prove outright with her tweets alone, it quickly became apparent that Talika's love interest, with whom she had seemingly tweeted to thousands of times, was in fact Marvin Sapp, introducing the possibility that Talika was perhaps just a crazed fan, which would make a few of her next tweets all the more disturbing. I have relocated to be with you, so I really hope you want me, so we can be in love and get married and have a couple babies. And, as you may or may not know, I attempted to visit you yesterday. Alright. Her messages were obviously concerning, as it began to grow apparent to investigators that this relationship Talika had mentioned was solely a one-sided affair. After all, most would have assumed that someone as famous as Marvin Sapp would have no idea who this woman was. <laughs> hey, my but nigga, do I? My nigga, I ain't gonna lie to you. I don't know who Marvin Sapp is. When it, when it first showed the picture, I, I thought it was... <laughs> oh. I thought Marvin Sapp was a football player, but I was like, damn, I don't watch sports. I don't be knowing too much shit in this world. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna lie to you, dog. I be checking out. But regardless, man. Was solely a one-sided affair. After all, most would have assumed that someone as famous as Marvin Sapp would have no idea who this woman was. But this actually wasn't the case, as Sapp did in fact know of Talika, only for all the wrong reasons. Around the start of 2013, Talika began obsessively messaging Sapp and tweeting out to him in some sort of code, believing that the two were somehow spiritually connected and that he would eventually come to her, even claiming on her social media that she and Sapp were actually married, something that Sapp would eventually take note of but never respond to, assuming that the woman may have been mentally unwell. However, when this failed to get a response, Talika then began to message Sapp's children, further Man, angering the singer the and increasing fuck? his level of concern. And when that too failed to get a response, Talika would pack her bags and relocate from California all the way to Kalamazoo, which just so happened to be the exact location of but Sapp's the, okay, so. I'm gonna go back. I wanna watch something real quick. As far as the Twitter account and the actual messaging the kids, the actual stating that we're married. No, 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 no. Uh, f making false accusations that about us being married and whole flying to him. These these are not part of theory. This stuff actually happened, like documented. You can check it. 
whatever, or it's been checked, right? Let me go back and watch this real quick because I'm not gonna lie. That ever since we got to the Twitter part, my brain kind of like went left. Like, what the hell? This, I'm not hearing this shit this way, dog. This is weird. And when that too failed to get a response, Talika would pack her bags and relocate from California all the way to Kalamazoo, which just so happened to be the exact location of Sap's congregation as well as his home, a home that Talika would eventually visit in the dead of night, confirming that her tweets referencing the matter were in fact true. Talika's behavior had gotten so serious that Sap himself convinced authorities to issue him an order of protection against her in September of 2013, pointing to over 400 pages of unwanted correspondence coming from her. Sap would also ban Talika from attending his church ever again. This, however, only heightened her delusional state and would lead to her posting these videos on her channel, as by this point, she was so far removed from reality that she truly believed that the two were lovers and that Sap was communicating with her telepathically and was somehow always with her. By the time December had rolled around, Talika's tweeting grew increasingly dark as she began to write about demons and how they were affecting her. Writing on the 4th of December, you reach me through a demonic portal. That gives demons power over me and dilutes my spiritual authority. Please understand that I must protect myself spiritually. The very next day, Talika would go through each of her Twitter accounts, delete everything, and vanish alongside of the road. The discovery of these accounts adds a whole new element to the case and seems to point to one obvious conclusion, that at the time of the disappearance, Talika was likely in the midst of some sort of severe psychotic break. But this still fails to explain what exactly had led to her actual <laughs> oh, disappearance. Shit. This question spurred on three prominent theories. One, that she had simply gone off into the woods alongside of the road attempting to hide from someone that just wasn't actually there, and instead was merely a figment of her delusions. And when hiding in the woods, she then succumbed to hypothermia, as wintertime in Michigan is notoriously cold. Two, that in the midst of this psychotic break, she decided to leave all her belongings aside and essentially run away, hitching a ride to somewhere far away, possibly to start a new life. And finally, three, the theory that she truly was being followed, and that someone had grabbed her alongside of the road leading to her disappearance. As after all, that's exactly where police dogs had lost her scent. Later, true. a bloodhound tracked her scent directly from the car to the side of the road. And from there, the trail goes cold. Some would even further theorize that perhaps the victim of Talika's stalking may have had a hand in it, as by this point, Sap was well aware of the woman and highly concerned with her behavior, which alone gave him a clear motive to protect his family. While others pointed to more scandalous affairs, that the two had actually been romantic in a time past, only to suffer from a major breakup, thus causing Talika's mental health to spiral, with the relationship potentially putting his career in jeopardy, as who knows what Talika might say or do. And given his wealth, he certainly had the means to make this happen. However, this theory never really went further than mere speculation, and police would adamantly state that Sap was merely a victim of stalking. I can't lie to you though, though with the whole Twitter situation, ever, ever since that point, this one just sounds so delusional. And I'm gonna let the story finish, let it play out. They could have, could have had a relationship, could have not had one. I don't fucking know, man. But it just, it seemed like everything that's being done from her end, it definitely seemed like someone who is having a mental breakdown dog that is legit stalking even giving people fake titles like yeah we're married and then reaching out to this man kids stop playing with me oh hell yeah i'm definitely protecting my family at all Talika might say or do and given his wealth he certainly had the means to make this happen however this theory never really went further than mere speculation and police would adamantly state that sap was merely a victim of stalking and was never considered a person of interest in this case the pastor is nothing more than an innocent victim of an apparent stalking and on a similar note there was another early suspect that would emerge in the public eye, Talika's ex-husband, Ismael Calderon, to whom she had been married to for four years before splitting up in 2011. Immediately after the two had separated, Talika had gone onto an online nursing forum and accused Ismael of emotionally and verbally abusing her throughout their relationship, leading some to question whether he too had a hand in Talika's disappearance, perhaps as a means of silencing her or getting revenge for their relationship ending. But much like Sap, Calderon was never actually labeled as a suspect, 
In fact, it appears that there was only ever one real person of interest in the minds of police, with that being James Davis, the last known contact that Talika had through her cell phone, as he was the one that Talika had called explaining that she was fearing for her life. Though given that he had lived so far away in St. Louis, he too would be cleared of any wrongdoings, and instead was eventually labeled as just a concerned friend. And with no suspect, no body, and no real concrete clues, speculation is really all we'd be left with. At least until April 3rd, 2013, when everything would change. Tonight, the developments continue to come in about a body found in a small Indiana lake. This was not the answer anyone wanted. Investigators are certain the body found in an Indiana lake is that of Talika Patrick. Nearly three months after her disappearance, a fisherman would come across the body of Talika Patrick floating in Lake Charles in the general vicinity where her car was found abandoned, with an autopsy eventually confirming her cause of death, drowning, with no signs of trauma evident on the body. Putting the pieces together, investigators theorized that Talika had suffered from a manic episode, causing her to believe that she was being followed and even hunted when she hurriedly drove off. And perhaps the shock of getting a flat tire led to her believing that someone was attempting to attack her, causing her to immediately grab Ooh, the keys yeah, and flee from the was car. Oh, for yeah, because when your paranoia is going, any little thing happened, we talk about this a lot, dog. That shit shoots up times 10. Fuck, man. Damn, cases like these, don't get me wrong. Ah, oh, this was a foul shit she was doing. But people, when their brains be like this, man, this shit still, it kills me, dog. That shit hurt, man. It's like, I don't, it's, it don't feel like you can tell them, like, yo, you're kind of tripping out. It's like, no, to them, they probably feel like this shit is fucking normal. I'm gonna let it finish, man. Off. And perhaps the shock of getting a flat tire led to her believing that someone was attempting to attack her, causing her to immediately grab the keys and flee from the car, fearing for her life. Without a flashlight and running in complete darkness, mm. it's believed that Talika accidentally ran straight into Lake Charles, which is a body of water located directly parallel to where her car was found, just a few hundred feet away. And tragically, that night, the water was incredibly cold Ooh, and could have caused I almost bet. immediate hypothermia, April? with the lake actually completely freezing over that well, very April, night. her body was found, right? Okay, immediate boy. hypothermia, with the lake actually completely freezing over that very night, hiding her body in an icy tomb and forever sealing her fate. And as for the trail she left behind on the internet, well, despite being initially labeled as a profoundly disturbing internet mystery, with these videos being considered key pieces of evidence within her case, law enforcement now believe that this was all just merely a coincidence. As though her uploads and tweets do show evidence of her stalking, this stalking to them seems unrelated to her actual vanishing. And rather than being viewed as clues pointing towards foul play, police now view these videos as apparent signs of Talika's fractured mental health health. This was the official explanation given for the disappearance of Talika Patrick, a tragic accident triggered by untreated mental illness. Although, of course, some are still skeptical, including Talika's own family, who point to several unexplained inconsistencies, like her scent trail leading directly to the road, which was the opposite direction of the lake. And the fact that the body of water where Talika had been found was supposedly thoroughly searched on the night of her disappearance and later even probed with sonar technology on two separate occasions, all of which yielding absolutely no results. Despite the fact that that body of water is so small that most in the area actually consider it to be a pond, as it's so minuscule that it's not even labeled on Google Maps or Earth. Which makes it all the more unusual that she wasn't discovered there sooner, prompting some to believe that she may have been kidnapped and killed elsewhere before her body was later dumped in the water to give the illusion of an accidental death. Another unknown in this case is what Damn. actually triggered her manic episode, as many would assume that something must have happened that led to her believing she was in imminent danger, with some believing that it may have been a threat from her ex-husband or even Marvin Sapp. But according to all witnesses around her that day, nothing at all out of the ordinary was reported that may have sparked this fear, and nothing would be found on her cell phone as well, leaving the true cause of her episode to be unexplained to this day. 
The family was so distrusting of the initial investigation that a second autopsy would eventually be oh. conducted, which would go on to show that Talika had water within her nasal cavity, a detail that to the pathologists proved for certain that she had in fact died by drowning, oh. which officially ended the police investigation for good, Damn. with one investigator stating that, I do believe it's probably as, as solved as it's going to get. Mm. Though to this day, we're still left with many unanswered questions, and for some, the mystery lives on. I hope you have a good night. Rest Bye. in peace. I love you. What I want to give a huge shout out to my Damn, definitely rest in peace to Salika. I know one thing, though. She wasn't the only delusional person in this damn story, dog. This shit started getting sick, man. Now, when, when it got to the point where it was like, all right, she started excessively reaching out to the uh, Marvin Sapp, whatever, over the Twitter, I was like, okay. For her being her own crazy in her own world, not harming anyone, just legit making Twitter accounts and talking to herself, which which is what it seemed like. All right, she ain't hurt nobody. That's how she cope. That's how she cope with it. Cool, do what she do, whatever. But then once I found out, she was like, all right, uh, started adding Marvin Sapp and then reaching out to this dude family as well and legit let him know like, yo, I'm making attempts to come see you, like to your home. At that point, I'm like, yeah, this shit is getting crazy. Like mentally, she is not fucking there, dog. Look, to be honest with you, the reason why I really hate getting these stories where it sounds like someone's mental state is just all fucking incorrect, where it sounds like a psychotic breakdown. The reason why I hate those ones, man, because they are roller coasters for me. Not gonna lie to you, at one point, you will feel bad. Like, oh, this person seemed everything seemed normal and everything. Like, oh, yeah, look, this person doing what normal people do. Like, she kept herself up, kept her her home up, looked like uh, she had a head on her shoulders, was a nurse, all this shit, was a great outspoken person, whatever. So I'm like, all right, great. This sounds like a great person, whatever. But then you start hearing that dark side where it's like, but let me take you on this side of the brain. And don't get me wrong, we all got a dark side. I don't give a fuck what you say. But the fact that hers was just like over, it, it, it was it was showing. I was like, oh shit, you supposed to keep like intrusive shit like inside. But yeah, these mental state videos, man, always take me back to the brain. I mean, because that's what it stems to. So we always got to talk about it. It, all seemed, it always seemed like we all got the same damn brain. We got, it's a brain. We got one. That's it. There's not different names for these shits. Like, or maybe there is. I don't know. But regardless, it's a brain. Nigga, that's it. Dog. But it's like, damn, why? This person shit couldn't be sane like this person or normal like this person shit who's to say your shit is normal who's to say my shit is normal i don't fucking know though that's why i hate these kind of damn stories man but look though, though i'm gonna go ahead and get up out here chill and enjoy my day definitely again rest in peace to talika man i really wish she could have got some help in it fuck man i really wish she could have I, I i really believe she's just someone who needed help i'm not i'm not gonna lie to you i don't know the full story we none of us know the full story what really what happened what really went down i was thinking it was some foul play at one point but more more than anything, I'm like, yeah, I'm leaning towards mental here, dog. Definitely wish you could have got some help. If someone could have just seen that shit. As far as Marvin Sapp, I don't blame him, blame him at all. Yes, he was definitely a victim because he don't know, dog. And the fact that you coming to me and my family, oh, hell no. All right, yeah, so it, 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 it wasn't his job to start pointing this shit out and start telling people, fuck that. Don't get my family involved in shit. Don't get me involved in that shit. But... Someone around her, man. Should have oh, fuck it. Let's get up out of here, dog. Hey, if you enjoy your day, morning, evening, night, whenever you watch this video, go ahead, have a good day. I'm out.